these days, we can connect almost all of our digital devices wirelessly to some form of connection, whether it's 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, or whatever you care to use. The data for this very video could be passing through your head right this minute, but rewind just a couple of decades and the scene was very different. Cables were king and the internet was new. Rewind another decade and the internet as we know it is nowhere to be found. Instead, we digitally dabbled alone or huddled together in the warming world of bulletin board systems, seeking like-minded human connection at 2am in the morning using our trusty 2400 board modems hooked directly into the phone line. It was bliss. Well, forget all of that because it's time to combine the best of these worlds. Enter Wi-Fi 64 from Shareware Plus, developed and designed by Erko Iuzal. Anyway, inside this box is something of wonder and mystique. You can see the Wi-Fi logo in the lower left corner, right next to a Commodore 64 expansion connector. I don't need to explain any more, you already know what this does. So let's plug it in, baby. Now to facilitate a Wi-Fi connection, we're going to need an appropriate program. This stuff isn't built into the Commodore 64's ROM, you know. I'm using a digital tape deck to load up this particular application, mainly because I'm from the UK and tape decks, even in digital form, feel more homely than those fangled disk drives. <sighs> a terminal interface. What a lovely feeling. This is CCGMS version 6 by Craig Smith, with mods by Always. Or always. It's the splendid tool which will bring life to our Wi-Fi 64. The process is pretty simple. Add the SSID of our wireless network Enter the password, use the command ATC1 to connect, and Bob is your freaking uncle. We have a Wi-Fi connection. I feel there should be a more dramatic sequence to illustrate this. Yeah, that works. Now, you may be thinking this is some kind of witchcraft or wizardcraft, but fear not. Having made his own version called the Retro Net, which I'll be featuring in a separate video, Dr. Armstrong from the Back Office Show is on hand to explain the gubbins. <clears throat> That's right, Peter. The Retro Net and other gadgets that are based on the ESP8266 chipset are imbued with a magical ability because they're powered by this amazing 32-bit RISC microcontroller running at 80 megahertz, which uh, completely, of course, outclasses any system we're likely to bolt this into. But if you crack them open, the reason this magic works so well is that it's got integrated Wi-Fi chipset. And that uh, Wi-Fi chipset not only controls the Wi-Fi side of things, but also a full TCP IP stack, which you're allowed to access via serial. Of course, Commodore 64s, Atari STs and Spectrums can't speak TCP IP natively, but they do speak Hayes modem. And the clever designers of this particular variant of ESP8266 module, uh, and they name themselves the AI Thinker, you'll see them, AI Thinker, they've actually got a Hayes modem stack bolted onto that. So using standard modem commands, you can get on the internet and, of course, talk to other units with the same chipset. Thank you, Dr. A. And as I said, we'll look at the retro net at some point in the very near future. Now let's explore. Handily with the Wi-Fi 64 is a deck of BBS top trumps. So by typing the command ATDT along with the BBS address and port number, we can connect to all sorts of excitement. Clearly this isn't how we'd have connected in the past. Back then a bulletin board system would have its own number or set of numbers which we'd dial using a modem, hopefully obtaining a connection if the line wasn't busy, whereby we could then go about our pre-internet affairs. Now, these archaic boards simply have their own web addresses, which can be connected to using a telnet protocol. 
and then redirected through to the bulletin board hardware, often using a virtual modem to interface the two. It's the same experience as old, just without the expensive phone bills. But it's the reason why many bulletin boards will still ask for your phone number upon registration. We can choose to connect up in either graphics or ANSI mode. Most boards will supply graphics, but otherwise we'll get a text interface. But it's still pleasant nonetheless. I managed to hook up my 64 to a BBS a couple of times in the 90s, and it was an incredibly exciting experience. Just to know that you were connecting with other people at any time of day without leaving the house was incredible. I felt like a goddamn hacker, stealing glimmers of information that the rest of the world were blissfully unaware of. I mean, usually it was that Sebastian from Morocco had lost his cat, or perhaps a short work of fiction from Malcolm in Florida, but it was still bloody exciting regardless. These cards are now a year or so old, so some of these boards have since closed down, which is a shame. Piece by piece the past disappears, but others are fully operational. I signed up to quite a few boards here and there, before rooting around for snippets of information or interesting files to download. You can even grab segments of code into a buffer and save them for later, like this sound effect program. But by far the best BBS was Commodore Image, run by Xtech. Here we have a wealth of information, lotteries, messages, games, and even movies. Oh yes. Well, I say movies. Although I did dig up one entitled Atari vs Commodore. You can see the full version of that on my extra channel, otherwise we'd be here all night. If you somehow got bored of the film's selection, then games might be your ticket. Most are text-based. We've got simulations where you speak to a therapist. A quiz which determines if you're addicted to computers, which apparently I somewhat am. Shocker. A graphical laser game in the style of Snake, which is monumentally hard with the 64's directional arrows, given you only have two keys for four tasks. Yes. But I still made the top 10 table. There were also tons of door and adventure games, along with some beta titles which seemed to crash the entire system. Anyway, before we get too bogged down in the world of bulletin boards, this video was about Wi-Fi on our trusty old Commodore 64, so let's get back to that briefly. One of the great things about the Wi-Fi 64 is that even after powering everything down, the adapter will remember your Wi-Fi details. So next time you boot up your trusty 64, you're ready to connect to whatever you please without hassle. I really love it when a piece of hardware or software pops up which drags a machine almost four decades old into our current age. The initiative, scope and excitement of the people behind these creations is infectious and it makes me want to do ooh, things with my Commodore all over again. Things such as logging onto Twitter using a client called Breadbox64. Unfortunately though, recent Twitter API changes mean it doesn't work anymore. So how about browsing the actual World Wide Web, or accessing email using something like the Contiki operating system? Well, Contiki is better suited for cartridge port devices like the RRNet, TFE and ETH64, but there are still more options and more programs we can look at in the future. For now it doesn't matter, we've got this 64 hooked up to Wi-Fi, and I'm more than happy with exploring the wealth of bulletin board systems still running. 
there's no doubt that connecting your Commodore 64 up to the internet opens up a whole new world of old. Thanks for watching, there's some more things you can click here. Or you can give a video a thumbs up, or down, it's up to you. Anyway, I hope you have a great evening.